listening to Talk Fame Radio. Views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of TalkTainmentRadio.com, the management, the staff, or k e World Network, LLC. Hello, hello, this is Talk Tamer Radio. And you're listening to Stairway to Heaven with your host, Dr. Bass Claude Smith. And I, my guest for the evening is Mrs. Adventist Bridget Norman of Praise Temple. And she has a Young Folks Ministries uh, coming to Praise Temple pretty soon. Uh, Adventist Bridget, uh, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, how are you? Fine, fine. And I'm glad to have you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, well, um, well, your brother talked to told me about it, so we're gonna like. I would like to tell, give us a little bit on the uh, your uh, young folks ministry. Um, yeah, well, we're having um, youth and young adults uh, a service where they're going to be incorporating the whole service. They're going pretty much going to run the service um, to get them more involved um, into coming to church and doing things um, in the church. And we're also going to have them show some of their talents um, because not everybody sings, um, but some children and young adults have different gifts. So if they have a talent that they want to show, we want to have them be able to show that talent and um, have them run the service, so it will be their Sunday. Oh, okay, that sounds that sounds good. By the way, let me say this. By the way, Stairway to Heaven is brought to you by the Sensation of Keys of Harmony and also Praise Temple. Where Dr. Dixon is the uh, pastor. Uh, I want better get that in. Uh, going back to your uh, ministry, uh, what what side what what? Uh, to decide the cause to bring this ministry through? Um, well, as I've been seeing in, in the news and um, different things that you hear um, on the radio and everything, there's so much uh, violence among um, young people and suicide rate is higher than it's ever been um, among youth and young adults. Um, and there's drugs is higher than it's ever been. Um, there's a report that um, a lot of children 12 years old here in the United States, 12 years old to 17, it's about like five, 6,000 um, that use drugs on a consistent basis. And that's just really just broke my heart because 12 year old, you should be having fun. Not, not using drugs and a lot of their lives these kids now are still in cars a lot of their life is over at 13 or 14 before it even begins yeah. and so um, and so the purpose of this ministry is to introduce them to, to Jesus so that they can always have another choice they can have a positive choice in, in their life and hopefully that they will um, get to know him and turn their life around uh, that, that is true. That is true. That sort of re, it, it sort of remind me when I was in Fort Worth, Texas, a while back when I took my sister in, in Texas. It, the young folks down there they was in a corrupt state. Now, seeing that it, the mood up here is, I see the same thing. Uh, I wonder what is causing this, or what, what what are they angry about? Um, I'm not really sure, but I think a lot of it, um, I think a lot of it is the um, being enclosed and not having, because if, when, you have, when you think about it nowadays, when as soon as these kids are born and they're able to, well, two years old, they're automatically given a tablet, you know, where they watch all types of video games or, you know, violent things on, 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 on their tablet. And um, as they grow older, you know, they're always, they're in the car, they get a tablet um you know and dinners used to be at home at the kitchen table now dinners is pretty much in the back seat of most cars so i think a lot of that isolation mm -hmm. and programming their mind to such violence at a young age could have an effect i don't know for sure i won't say that it will mm -hmm. but i think that it is um i think that it does contribute to th some of that yeah I, I believe it does too because i have a more into more video games and then uh, what they could learn at home or in the Bible. They, and some of some of them I, I had heard one time. Some have could, could repeat the same some words to a rap record. 
And I, I, I think that kind of had a, some sort of effect. Do you believe that had some sort of effect on them? Or? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, I do. I do. You know, um, because you, because you're feeding all of that into your spirit. And what you put in your spirit is what you're going to put out. That's true. That's true. And then also, uh, also I heard, uh, I want you to ask, I want you to give me an opinion of this one. Uh, I heard at one time a friend of mine told me that it's, it's the music that turns them away from the Bible or the, or, or, or the words that the rappers are saying. Does that have anything to do with it? Going into suicide? Um, I'm, I'm not really sure because I don't know a lot of all of the, the rap songs that's that's out there. Mm -hmm. But I think it's pretty much, you know, like I said, what what they're feeding into their spirit has a lot to do with what they're what they're putting out. But I do notice too that um, gospel music has changed, and so um, you know there is some positive gospel music out there, and the rap and every uh, rap, a lot of rap in the gospel. And I think that we need to actually incorporate some of that into our churches if we want the young people to come we can't we can't get them to come into the church on the music that you and I grew up on mm -hmm. um, traditional music or uh, some people like certain type of music quartet music or um, you know we have to be able to find the music that relates to them in these days and times and you have a lot of uh, churches also that are not willing to go that far because they think it's bringing the world music into the church, but it's not. We have to go to reach these kids where they're at. Yeah, that is that is true. There is some churches that will not bring that music into their church churches, fearing of that. But uh, I believe that we can. Uh, I believe that we can. If we can get them and let bring some of their own music in the church, maybe that would would do it. Will that bring them in? Bring them in. I'm bringing them in and and having more um, activities for for things for th for for them to do. Um, one thing I have learned is that kids, a lot of kids that actually play sports or into sports all the time, mm -hmm. that gives them less time to to get in trouble or or be hanging out. Um, if more churches had their own um, soccer team, if they had basketball team and little league football leagues and things, something for the kids to do to keep them um, entertained and they can learn mm -hmm. about the Lord also. Oh, okay. Well, let me ask you a real serious question. Is does do you believe that some of the older people are holding some of our young folks back from trying to get into get in some of the programs that the churches have? Um, I I would say maybe it's it's there's a strong possibility because a lot of times they're just set in their ways and the way that they want their church to be. It really takes somebody to think outside the box um, to incorporate a program for young uh, the youth or or young adult um pretty much someone who's a lot older they're pretty much just set in their ways and into their ministry the way the way that they know it i mean that's just like it's come a long way where um when people went to church they had to they wore dress shoes and dress pants but kids these days they're going to have to come to church with their jeans and tennis shoes on yeah, See, that's a whole big, big different thing right there. And so the the whole style of dressing, you will see people with earrings all over the place and tattoos. You know, that's what you're going to be looking at nowadays. Yeah, I see lots of I see lots of tattoos everywhere. Don't get me wrong, right, mm -hmm. a whole lot of tattoos. And uh, I is my uh, I feel that uh, let them come. Yes, let them come. Let, let them come as they are. Because. Right, let them come as they are, and because because the Bible teaches us that faith come by hearing and hearing of the word of God. If they don't hear the word of God, you can't expect for them to change. Oh, okay, that that is that is true. That is definitely true. Yeah, let them come as they are. Maybe by them letting them come as they are, maybe they they can get they'll get the feel that they're wanted. Uh, most of the young people, uh, do you feel that some of the young people that don't come, they don't want to come because they don't want it or they're not wanted. Yes, I believe so because it's so different from them because of all the the rules, the rules and the, and the regulations that a lot of churches have put on um, the restrictions that they have put on into their house. And then, um, and then when you know when when you come into the church, 
um, something. You're not dressed the way that they feel that you should be dressed. You know, you get a lot of eye staring and, um, you know, you may even get, uh, for example, like some young ladies, they may not have one proper attire, but and then somebody may come to them and say, well, you know, this is what you should wear to church or trying to put a scarf over them or something. They don't know anything about that. You know, it, the Lord will change them. Right. That is, that is true. Yeah, I'm trying to the, Lord will, the Lord will change them. You know, um, they have to come come and learn um, first, and then he will, he will work with their heart and put things on their heart. Um, but when you start trying to tell someone that, they need to have this, or they gotta have that, or doing things. I mean, that 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 turns people that turns people away. And and another thing too is that people, um, especially young people, and they have the mindset that um, that you know that, that they're not right for um, church, especially especially your young adults, especially when you get to the point where. Um, they may say, I mean, it could be a person that's smoking. They'd be like, well, I don't want to go to church because I'm smoking. And um, it ain't right. They say that you can't go to church if you smoke, you know, or I don't want to be feeling bad or guilty. Then people will talk about me. Yeah, I, 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 I've, I've heard that. I have heard that. And, yeah, and then I rather for that person to come to come to church because that person may not be able to to stop smoking on their own they may need the lord for them to stop smoking and um because i mean that that was a situation that had happened with me um years ago when i first started going to church um i joined the church and you know i used to smoke my cigarettes so i can speak this for you know from experience um i used to i, I was smoking cigarettes at the time um and then but the more that i kept going um, and so I, I really ended up liking the church. And so then I decided that I wanted to sing in a choir and I was still going to choir rehearsal, smoking my cigarettes, you know. And then um, the more that I got into my praise and worship and singing and being on that stage, uh, praising God, then I got to the point where I said, I don't even want to step into the Lord's house now like cigarettes, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I said, Lord, take this away from me. And he did. Okay. And that is true. You know, so, and, and so, but but if if someone would have told me that you can't be in a choir because you're smoking and you smoke like smoke when you come to church, I would have left that church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, there is some, there is some, some strict uh, choir directors that uh, you know if they smell smoke, they tell them you can't come in. Uh, you can't come in the church because you're smoking there. I had one uh, when I used to smoke. I had that happen to me one time. I just got through playing and. Oh, this lady came out, jumped all over me. <laughs> I mean, she jumped all over me because I had a cigarette in my hand, which I wasn't. I wasn't in front of the church door. I was about three, four houses down the street from the church, and she walked up there and told me off. But then, mm -hmm. and, I'm sorry, go ahead. And uh, you know, in a way, that kind of, kind of drew me away from. It. But then I said, no. Nah, I'll keep going. I said, but I say, Lord, to take it away from him, which he did. And uh, uh, I just kept going. I didn't pay her no never minds. I just kept going because she, she wasn't she, she wasn't no judge where I'm going, where I'm going to heaven or hell. And that's, that's right. And so I just kept right on going. Uh, you have any, right. you have any shout outs you'd like to give out to your people, to your family, friends? I give someone a shout out. Yes, I'd like to give my, uh, my father, uh, Deacon Fletcher. Um, and we are going to be having a little something for him and my, um, and Pastor Stewart, mm -hmm. um, and Pastor, Pastor Dixon. I mean, just, uh, pretty much, um, uh, um, Elder Arner Smith, um, all of my family, my brother Paul, you know, our whole family has been, um, um, in, in music or, um, or in the gospel. We have a lot of ministers that, that run, that run in our family. I just, I'm really blessed. You know about that, that that there's somewhere that I can go. I mean, every everywhere I turn, every situation that there's that there's someone there, and um, how our family was raised. You know, mm -hmm. and and to love the Lord and and to be in church, and and it, and it really makes a difference in your life. And that's the one of the reasons why I another reason why I want to start this youth program is because. Some people may not have family, but they should be able to find uh, their family and love into 
the church. Yes, there is. Well, I'll tell you, sir, your father and I have been knowing each other for years. <laughs> Deacon Fletcher, we've been knowing each other for years. Uh-huh. I used to play bass guitar for the group for the five stars when it, when I first came to Columbus. Uh-huh. And uh, also, I'm going to tell you something. Your brother asked me to ask, ask me what I come up with, let him ask me to get you on here so you can explain what what, what uh, you're about to bring. It's beautiful. I, I, it's, yes. It is a real beautiful, it's about time somebody did for something for the young folks and I just hope and pray that it, you continue on going through with it. Yes, well, I will. I'm going to try to have something every month. If not every month, then every every other month. I want the program to to grow and um, to try to get um, more young people um, into the church. Um, hopefully, next summer that we'll be able to start some type of youth program where we can have like a basketball mm -hmm. um, or maybe a, a football league or, or maybe even a soccer team. Just something that um, that that we can have to keep you know some kids coming to something because sports is very very important because you know how to to work with a team to focus as a team and to trust your your teammates and so a lot of people may not have that in their home or have that growing up um uh, because we we have a lot of homes that don't have fathers in them to actually teach kids and the mothers work all the time and most of the time they're home with their siblings or you know or a lot of kids is out running around and if we could be that place where the kids could be for four or five hours you know where they're until their parent get off of work that would just be wonderful instead of them just being out in the streets getting in trouble that is true that's the best that's that's the best uh suggesting that I have you have a beautiful plan a very very beautiful plan and I'm looking forward to uh t looking forward to see how it works because I might my my only besides sports and it might be one of them young people might want to learn how to play music uh, yes, and that's, that's the first thing that just popped into my mind, too, that we can even have music classes, yeah, music you know, classes. Um, and to have people into uh, different music, guitar and drums, you know, mm -hmm. I, you know, I want to take it as far, you know, as we can, you know, I would even like to have a tutoring session for those that maybe need a little help in school. As more people join the, the ministry, I want people that's in the church, because everybody has a talent, some type of talent, pretty much, that, that they can help out where they can help grow so that we can be well well rounded all the way around yeah that that that, 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 that is so beautiful everybody all of us got talent maybe we can learn to pass it on to them yes yes yeah pastor. let me make this uh, little shout out right quick i'm a, my shout is going out to the core lab keys of harmony praise temple uh my good friend sam and his family um uh, scott and his family jerome and his family and I also praise them as the church and their families, and also to my wife Fat. <laughs> and uh, hopefully, you know, and my VA doctor from from the VA hospital, Doctor Val Valadares. <laughs> I've been trying to get up, you know, on the show, but uh, yeah, that is that is that is a good good idea, a very good idea, and I kind of like the idea that you got. And thank me, you. I really really love it because. Something's about time. Some of us old folks need to grab them young people and put put them under under our wings and teach them the right way of life. Because there's so much going yes. on, going on, and I and I think I think that's, that is so beautiful. What you, what you uh, what you got going on? Very beautiful. And I'm gonna be watching and see if I can find somewhere I can, where I can fit in somewhere. I'll find somewhere. But uh, you know, I'll wonderful. I'll find somewhere to try to get in and try to help you out in some type of way. But uh, yes, that is the most beautiful, beautiful uh, youth. Uh, that's the first time. It's not the first. You're not the only person I heard try to do something for the youth, and had tried. And uh, quite a few of my friends, I know some friends that tried to use for the youth, but got it got torn down because the church wouldn't let them have it. You know. But you ever think about? Mm -hmm. Let me throw this in your in your little play. You ever thought about having a uh, a Sunday for youth where you can just take over the church? invite the visitors, be the nurses at the doors, anything like that? Anything like that? Yeah, well, that's what we're going to do this Sunday. The youth are going to usher. They're going to take up the offering. Um, they're going to sing. They're hmm. going to pretty much do everything. Oh, that sounds good. That, that sounds beautiful. Well, I'm sorry I won't be, but I'll be with a family in Cincinnati. But 
I'm glad. I'm glad of that. I'm really glad that. This well, it it will be recorded on Facebook um, okay. under Ernest Smith, so um, you guys can probably get a chance to chance to see it. So you know, we have asked everybody if they know any 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 youth and young adult that if they they're more than welcome to come to Praise Temple this Sunday. Service starts at eleven o'clock. Um, we're going to have opening prayer with the youth. I mean, they're going to do the prayer. They're they're going to run the service. I'm just going to give the word. I'm going to give them the word that God has put on my heart and wants me to put out there. So I'm going to do that. But at my next youth program, I'm hoping that I can have a young adult uh, give the word. Oh, that sounds good. I want to be there when that happens. I definitely want to be there when that happens. And uh, yeah, I'm so glad. I'm glad that you got that going on. And hey, I'm looking forward to that. Like looking forward to that. And I believe you, I believe it's going to go bigger than than. Uh, as it is, I see it's going to be much, much bigger than it is, and I hope it goes bigger and bigger and beyond. Hope it goes beyond. Yeah, what? Well, oh yeah. yeah. Well, I, I had had it for a minute, and um, I was just, and I, 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 I felt like I didn't have enough you know, youth or young adult to actually go ahead with the prep, the program, but it just kept tugging on my heart so much. So I just told God that I was going to set a date and I was going to leave the rest up to Him. Okay, that sounds real, real. It sounds good, and, and uh, that's the way you have to go. Yeah, that's the way you have to do it. It's just like when I did my first uh, 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 program, did a gospel explosion one year, and I was so nervous. I started gonna call it off, but I didn't. I kept right on going. It turned out to be a success. So I believe this is gonna be a success because uh, Thank you. it's gonna be a big success. So my little advice from me to you: once you get it started, keep it going. Keep, I will, thank keep, you. Keep it going because uh, just like this radio program I'm in, I, I, would, I did a radio show when I was in Texas and I got away from it and they kept biting on me and kicking me, kicking and biting on me. So I said, I give up. I'm going back on the, on the, on the, on the studio. So here I am. <laughs> so you just keep going. It, 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 uh, it'll grow. It's going to grow. It's going to get bigger and bigger each and every time. Yes, I believe that. All right, looking forward forward to it, and uh, I'm trying to and uh, it, and when it does grow, stay where you are. When when it does grow and it gets bigger and bigger, I hope that um, if it gets big enough to be citywide, and look for that would be awesome. I'm looking for it to be very city. Well, you know, God can do it. God can do it. Yeah, he can. He can. He can do it. And. You know, like I said, I'll do try to help you in some type of way that that uh, people will know that you got a, that you got a program going on, a youth program going. I put it that way. Uh -huh. I'll let you let people should let people know you do have a youth program, and and, uh, and it's like there's a, I see a lot of young people every day uh, when I get off from work in the morning, going to school, and and when I'm at home, I look outside my yard front door. There's a lot of children out there. They and it wasn't like when we had we had places to go, things to do. It wasn't like when these young people today don't have nothing, don't have no place to go, yeah. and and no one to guide them, lead them towards the good things. When we was going, we it was we it, we were strict. To, it, our parents were a little hard on it, but now these children now don't have no guidance, no no uh, no type of, of striction, uh, hard striction on them. But uh, yeah, we, that's gonna be beautiful. I mean, that's gonna be real, real beautiful. And hopefully that it does, uh, like I said, looking for it to go stronger and stronger and stronger each and every day. I go, go stronger and stronger. And I'm looking for it to go stronger and stronger. Uh, so we'll give it the best shot. Give it, give, yeah. it the, give it the best you got. All right. Well, I'm gonna I you, will. All right, I'm gonna let you stay where you are. And uh, t and I'm gonna say a few words and just stay where you are, and I'll get right back with you. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, uh, my listeners, this this is uh, this is a beautiful program, beautiful program. And also, I like to say this uh, for those who don't know, uh, for those who some of who do know, Deacon Bruce Fletcher uh, of the Five Stars, uh, uh, his son, his children. He does not know anything about this, does he? Hello? No, he does not. He does yes, not? No, he does not. <laughs> yeah, because I had him on the show last year. 
I had him, him and the brother Paul on the show last year. And uh, he, okay. he does not know nothing about this. Yes, that's coming up on the 10th, and it's totally a surprise. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And he's been singing out. Let's talk about your dad a little bit. Uh, your dad. Okay. Your dad read to a lot of top singers. A whole lot of top singers. Yes. And uh, I heard, and, uh, when I came to here, he was the first guy that asked me to play. Uh, another guy asked me to play for him. That's when I met him. And, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, he's been singing for years all over the place, you know. Um, he's even sung with a couple of stars. He's, uh, he's been singing gospel music, you know, gosh, what, oh, well over 60 years. And that's the reason why that we're going to, and he's still singing today, you know, which is totally awesome. And then that's the reason why this program is so important, is that we're, we'll have a chance to honor him for his contribution. Um down throughout the many, many years, you know, that he has made his sacrifice uh, to be a blessing yes. to others. Yes, because he still got that strong voice. Yes, he's still very, very strong. That indeed he is. Yeah. And you would have think for somebody who's about to be hitting 90. <laughs> and, still, and still going strong. And still going strong. Going strong. strong. I, don't think, I don't think anything going to put him down. He's still going strong. And I hope, I hope as the years come, he goes stronger, stronger, and every day. Because uh, uh, that CD that I would, I have, he's still, he still got it. And I listened to him when, when he sang Sunday morning. That voice is still there. Yes. It's still there. Absolutely. And, and I, I'm going to say that I am so grateful and, grateful and blessed that I met him. I'm, I'm very glad and grateful that I met him. And uh, hey, he showed me a lot when I got here. He really did. He showed me a lot. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm proud to hear that. Yeah, your dad showed me a lot. He was he was one of the, uh, uh, he, when I first got, my brother-in-law, my ex-Blake brother-in-law, uh, they went to the fire so I looked for a bass player and then somebody told him about me. I just moved up here. And uh, I met him, and I went to rehearsal with him one night. <laughs> I stayed there for a while before I left and went with the pros. And uh, he, he, he. I mean, when I first heard him sing, I said, "Dang on, this man, this man got a voice out of this world." You know, and I hope. And then his years later, he still got it. But I'm so glad that y'all give me this appreciation and everything, and. Uh, he's one of the old gospel le legends here in the city of Columbus. Yes. And, and he's up there with uh, Deacon Woods. He's with LaGloria. Uh, there's two two more. There's some more that they're gone now. Um, gospel Clouds. He's up there. With, I mean, he he out he survived out of the uh, the clouds. Uh, Bill Rash and James uh, Walter Flemings and all of them. Uh, but he is, he's still hanging in there, and I'm, I'm so glad he's still hanging in there. I'm still glad he's still lead singing for the stars. And uh, Yeah, I am too. I'm so glad to see that, see him do that. And, uh, oh, man, that, that, he, uh, he is, oh, very, very, I'm very, very grateful that I met him. And he, I'm very grateful that he still got, I'm grateful that he still got that voice. And I, oh, you know, I think when he's singing, I think the Lord's with him all over when he gave him strength to keep that voice. Yes, it, yeah, it's just totally, totally um, amazes me that he can sing the way that he can um, still at at this age, this point in time in, in his life. It's like, wow, you know, um, and I, I guess because, you know, he never, ever stopped. Um, you know, some people uh, would sing and then maybe for a long time they don't sing anymore and it would be kind of hard for them to actually come back. But I think since he's never, ever stopped, that that's what just kept him going and kept his voice very strong. Yeah, it, yeah, he, he, no, he, he's not he's not going to stop. He's not going to stop. He's going to keep going. He's a, he's a he's a old 
a warrior. No, he's a he's an old professional. No pros do not stop. They keep right on going. And there as no there's no retirement in that voice of him nowhere. He's gonna keep going. Yes. He's going. Okay, stay where you are. Uh, to all my YouTube friends and and uh, all my YouTube friends, I say remember this: the mind is nothing but the garden what you put in it grows. And we was and I appreciate my guests on on the air with me, Ms. Ms. Uh, Ms. Avengers Bridget Norman, Avengers for her on this time. And hey, we'll see you on YouTube next time. Thank you. Stay where y'all, Bridget. Okay.